All right, hi everybody. John Meadows still here. Got a couple of band aids on today, and uh, mm -hmm. as you may have heard, I had an incident on Monday. So I want to first get into: Is it really true that I had a heart attack? Did it really happen? Well, it's absolutely true. So I want to talk about what happened. Um, just to let you guys know what transpired, what happened during the course of the week, where I'm at now, and where I'm headed. So Monday was, um, <clears throat> I have a really sore throat and I'll, you'll understand why when I get to that part of the story. So if I don't sound right, just bear with me. So Monday started off just like any other day. I felt good. I was on some exercise with a friend and, um, um, I started feeling some chest pain right in my sternum and it was unlike any pain I've ever felt before. It was very scary. And I was thinking, did I drop a bar on my chest or what? Um, and I started having trouble breathing in a couple minutes. A really hard time catching my breath. So I thought, man, this isn't good. There's something wrong here. But maybe if I just relax, it'll go away. Maybe it's anxiety. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll go away. So I sat down on the bench and then I realized it was getting worse. And it was getting harder and harder to breathe. And then I basically fell off the bench onto the floor and laid there and tried to stretch out to see if that would help. So after uh, a couple minutes there, I realized that wasn't helping either. Um, so I think probably five or 10 minutes had passed. And um, I told my friend, you know, I think you should probably take me home. And he was like, uh, are you sure? Like, you sure you don't want me to call, some, call the squad? And I sat there for a second and um, I thought, this is something serious. Like, it's not time to be a tough guy. It's time to call for help. So I said, yeah, let's call for, let's call the squad. So the squad got there in, you know, probably 10, 15 minutes. And um, they had all the electrodes hooked up to me. And they put me in, um, they put me in the ambulance and they took me there. It was probably another 20 to 30 minutes to get to the hospital. And when he put me in the ambulance, I was kind of looking over my shoulder and um, I, I asked him, you know, what's going on? Because I could see he was studying the um, readings on my heart pretty closely. And he said, you're having a heart attack right now. So I said, okay, well, this is getting real. This is very real. And um, he gave me four or five baby aspirin, said, here, chew these up. And then all of a sudden it hit me like, <clears throat> you know, this could be, this could be your last day on earth. <laughs> so it was pretty intense. And I just started thinking about, you know, my family and, you know, I didn't have a dad. I wanted my kids to have a dad growing up. I thought maybe I was getting ready to put them in that position. And uh, I just, I just was, it was tough. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend that it was easy. So <clears throat> I got to the hospital and they brought me into what's called the cath unit. And there were about seven, eight people just standing in line waiting for me. So the first thing I thought was, yes, this is actually very serious. Um, and then this is great. There's so many people here that can help me. At least there's a, at least there's a lot of people here that can help me. And um, so they pulled me into the cath unit. And um, what they did was, uh, I don't know if you guys can see this right here, but they put a uh, basically, we'll just call it a tube up your arm and into your heart so they can look at my heart. And so they did that and they gave me some medication to kind of not really knock me out because I could see what they were looking at, but dampened the pain a little bit. Um, they had given me more more nitroglycerin by that point. I think I think by the end of that, by the time I got to that point, I'd actually taken another two or three nit nitroglycerin as well. And like if you ever hear stories about that, you'll hear people that when they have a heart attack, they're supposed to take out a nitroglycerin tablet and take it immediately. And I had already had, I want to say two or three of those at that point, in addition to the baby aspirin as well. So um, he did the test and he said, yeah, there's some blockages here. And I was like, okay. So, you know, I'm, I wasn't completely with it, but to the best of my knowledge, um, he basically said, you have some blockages. I see some blood clots. You have a very large artery that's blocked and you have a real small branch um, of an artery that's blocked. 
on the left side of your heart. So um, in the left side, the left side is pretty important. Um, they're all important, but the one article, the one blood clot that was really big was in the worst spot it could be in. And he said, that's probably why your pain is so bad. It, at that point, my chest still felt like um, somebody literally was just ripping my sternum out. I don't know how else to describe it. This right along here was just severe, severe, severe pain. So um, they took me in. Uh, they started giving, giving me morphine. And the pain was really, really bad. They gave me two milligrams of morphine. I couldn't feel it. They gave me another two milligrams. I couldn't feel it. They gave me another two milligrams. I couldn't feel it. And I said, you know, if you check my records here, back in 2005, I had a, a stomach surgery that required 10 to 12 milligrams of morphine. And they said, we can't give you that much. We're not allowed. So, so I was in a lot of pain that first night. And um, they did try some other pain medications, but no matter what they tried, that, that pain in the chest just wouldn't go away. So um, they started, they gave me a bunch of IVs. I had at least three IVs. I had a nitro, so, so after they gave me all the nitroglycerin pills, they put me on a nitroglycerin IV, and that's to dilate your blood vessels so, it'll, so blood will flow. So they gave me a nitroglycerin IV. They gave me an IV for a blood thinner called heparin. So I had a, a blood thinner um, IV in me as well. And then I had an IV of something else on this arm. Um, I know I had saline at some point, and I had a, I had another IV. They were putting pain meds in this one too. Maybe they were just putting the pain meds in the other IV. But um, anyways, I had two or three different IVs going. And um, so the next day I woke up, still... Um, Tremendous amount of pain. Um, and they took me back to the cath lab. And they did the same thing. They took my arm. They went through the artery up into my heart. And he said, oh, I have good news. Uh, the big, the left descending artery is clear now. In that one spot where you had the big clot, it's clear. And you should start feeling a little better. But the little small one is still there the clot now what he explained to me was that the little tiny um, branch uh, of the artery is really small and i was taking a lot of blood thinners so if they can actually go in there and they can actually try to remove the blood clot themselves but it's kind of a risky proposition because if they damage a the vein and you're bleeding a lot now you have a whole another set of problems so he didn't feel really good about trying to get into that tiny um tiny branch um, but he was he was obviously very happy that the large um, clot had had went away. It was gone. And through the day, the pain started, it did start wearing off. And I want to say maybe seven, eight o'clock at night, I started noticing, oh, I feel a little better now. It's not as not as bad. Um, I still hadn't eaten. I didn't eat Monday, I didn't eat Tuesday. Tuesday night, they tried to give me a little bit of food. I took one bite of it and almost puked it right back up. So I didn't eat. Still still had quite a bit of pain going. They were cranking the nitroglycerin to dilate your blood vessels. One side effect of that is a headache. So I was fighting a headache the whole time too. Um, <clears throat> so then Wednesday morning, I woke up. I felt much better, much better. At this point, they had already started taking blood three or four times a day. They were taking it in all my veins and my hands. I still have some of the Band-Aids on. I've, take, I've already taken like six Band-Aids off, but they were checking my blood thickness um, due to the hep, hep, um, heparin, which is the blood thinner. Um, they, what they do is they look at the thickness of your blood and they want it at a certain ratio and they toggle the heparin in up and down until they get it right. So it was a constant, let's check his blood, check the IV drip, check his blood. So they were literally taking blood from me all the time. So Wednesday, I felt a lot better. Um, the pain, had a lot of it went away. I looked briefly at my phone and I saw the messages and um, I had several thousand messages, which I'm very, very grateful for. I couldn't get to all of them, obviously. Um, number one, I couldn't hardly bend my arms with all the IVs in my arms. But um, I did see a lot of the messages. I can't say I saw them all, but I, I will see them. Um, so I really appreciate you um, sending me the messages, my family, the messages. Um, and that was <clears throat> that was last night. So they the so last night what they tried to do was just stabilize my blood pressure, and they were able to do that. 
So then today they just said, um, let's go in and do, it's called a transesophageal electrocardiogram. And what that is, is they take a camera and they shove it down your throat. And that's why my throat is sore. And they put the camera down and to your uh, throat so they can actually see your heart and they can look right there. What are they seeing? There's no guesses. It's right inside. Um, they lay you kind of on your side. They put this bite guard in, so your mouth is open. They pretty much knock you out and then they stick the camera in, they do their thing and then you wake up. I knew what that was because in 2005, um, what happened, and I want to talk about this a little bit. So in 2005, some of you know my history, some of you don't. I had a, um, basically a blood clot in the sigmoid part of my colon. In, uh, it was in um, one of the veins, mesenteric veins, that basically caused blood to start coagulating. And it created a lot of pain. Um, it built up over maybe four weeks. And then I was in the hospital. Luckily, I was in the exact same hospital um, then as I was this time. But I was in the hospital because I was in pain and the, vein, and the vein in my colon exploded. And I was bleeding to death, so they took me into surgery. But anyways, as they were trying to figure out what caused that, they did a lot of tests. So, And they had done that test back then in, in addition to a bunch of other tests. So I, I had done that test before. I knew what they were going to be looking for. So they um, looked at my heart. And he gave me the full evaluation. He said, based on this and all the machine tests we've been running, your heart's normal size, no concerns there. And um, atherosclerotic plaque, um, zero concern there. And I think you guys know that I had a uh, calcium score test done. I don't know, it's probably been a couple of years now, which detects plaque in your veins and arteries. And that's what one of the concerns is with bodybuilding. It's, it's the buildup of plaque. Some of us due to food, some of us due to chemicals and all those things. But, um, you know, there's a fear of um, dietary cholesterol, for example, and all the plaque that's going to cause. Like if you eat whole eggs, some people, they don't really have much education. So they see a whole egg and they go, oh, you're going to get plaque in your arteries. Well, my arteries were great. They were very happy there. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't find any more evidence of what could cause the clot. Uh, but... He did say that they didn't see a lot of damage. And though, even though my heart was functioning at 10% less than what it was, what it's supposed to be, there's a chance that that can come back. So, you know, that's probably just going to depend on me over the next couple months, just being smart, not doing anything stupid, taking my medications like I'm supposed to take. And then I feel like, um, I feel like I'll be back in terms of just feeling good and feeling healthy. I have zero concerns and I'm not going to feel good. I think I just need to listen to the cardiologist. I actually have a cardiologist now. I think I just need to listen to him, follow his advice, and um, keep an eye. I do I do wonder, like, if I would have been taking blood thinners maybe after the thing happened to my stomach, I, I do kind of wonder if that would have... Maybe I should have been put on those back then. And the doctor told me, you need to be on baby aspirin the rest of your life. And I've been hit and miss with it. Sometimes I'll take it and I'll do a video and you guys will see I'm taking baby aspirin and sometimes I'm not. So I have not been consistent with that. Um, <clears throat> but I think moving forward, uh, there were some good things um, taken out of it, which is, you know, anything non-clot related to my heart. And there's some bad things to take out of it too. Certainly nobody wants to go through something like this. But um it's Thursday night right now. I got back home today. I just took a nap and cleaned up a little bit. And, um, you know, I'll get to um, work. I'll work my way back into, you know, my job and my emails and all that stuff in the next couple of days. And uh, but I just wanted to let you know what really happened, you know, but moving forward, I don't really, you know, the doctors didn't suggest and I don't really see any need for dietary changes. Not a single person I talked to thought that that would make any difference at all. They, you know, they didn't see anything that would warrant that. I think just, I think just um, be smart and just listen to the doctors is my plan. And it's basically taking my medications. I'm not supposed to strain a lot in the next two weeks, but he said you should be able to train. You know, once you, we feel like your heart is coming back and it can do its job, you can train hard. You know, don't don't go in there and go nuts, which is you know hard for me. But I'm not. 
I'm not that stubborn. I'm not stubborn to the point of stupidity. So if, <laughs> I know a lot of people are kind of stubborn to the point of stupidity, but if he tells me, don't kill yourself, no more cluster sets for you, then I won't be doing any cluster sets. So that's, um, that's it. That's the truth of what happened from Monday to Thursday night, which is what time we have right now. Um, I'm very, very happy to be alive. Um, when you're sitting in an ambulance and a guy tells you you're having a heart attack right now and you see the look on his face and how concerned he is and then you think to yourself, boy, this is serious. That wasn't a good feeling. And then when the pain, and one of the things I was worried about was I had so much pain up into Tuesday that I was worried that I had more damage continuing to be done. But not really sure if that's the case or if it isn't. Not really sure, to be honest. Maybe it is, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But that was one of the things that was worried me. It was like, I don't want to have this weak old heart that can't handle any stress. I mean, I've been able to handle a lot of stress in my life, um, you know? So it's kind of part of who I am, but you know, I'll adjust and do what I need. So that's the video. I honestly haven't looked at any other videos about it. Um, I really don't care. I just wanted you guys to know what really happened. and. Who knows? Maybe there's conspiracy theories out there. Maybe not. But I do know that a lot of people sent me messages and well wishes. And that's what those are the messages that I care about. So, like I said, I got thousands of them. And even though I couldn't respond to all of them, um, I did start reading them today and seeing them today. So thank you for the support. And, you know, we're going to keep cranking on our videos. We're going to keep making them. So that's it. And um, we'll see you next time.